Let me know. All right, here we go. Today, I'm gonna show you how I use VFX to transform into random household objects. Just like the popular game Prop Hunt, or Maui from Moana, or any one of these books we saw in the library as children, yeah, that's nightmare fuel. In front of me are nine random objects, three small, three medium, and three large. I have no idea what any of these are, and I'm gonna pick one from each category. And once I'm done editing all these videos, I'm gonna show the guys. First up, the smalls. Mm, we're going with this one. Okay, simple enough, stuffed animal. Now for the medium. We're going middle, M for middle, M for medium. Oh, okay, this one will be fun. A plunger. And finally, for the large object, I am going garbage can. All right, these are the three objects. So I'm turning into a stuffed animal, a plunger, and a garbage can. Let's get started. First, the stuffed animal. This outfit is the closest color I have to the stuffed animal, so I think it's gonna work. It has to work. Hello there. It kind of lands like in the basket, like that. Yeah, we'll go get the crash pad, foreground, something like this. I look at it and I'm like, <laughs> but then it turns into the, the bear. Initially, I was thinking I would start on the couch, stand up and stretch and jump onto the crash pad. But then from a storytelling perspective, it'd make a lot more sense if I was already cleaning up before this transition took place. So that's what we did. <laughs> Gosh. That one was crazy. Another happy landing. Now after some back-breaking exercise, I grabbed those same stuffed animals and threw them into the basket. And then tried a variety of ways of throwing the bear into the basket until it landed just right. Now, before we film the next two videos, we're gonna jump right into the edit for this one. First, I bring in the main take where I throw the stuffed animals and then jump onto the crash pad. Now, bringing in the ladder take with the basket, I line them up so the timing is correct. Now, I'm gonna use roto paint to cut out this bear. The initial thought was to bring those arms back and elbows up to replicate the arms of the bear. But the more I watch it, the more it feels like those could actually be the ears of the bear head, while my shirt can actually become the head of the bear itself. First, I'm actually gonna roto out my outfit for the entire take, and using composite brush, I changed the color of my outfit to better match the bear. And, nah, that's close enough. Now it's time to use the handy dandy puppet warp tool, which is one of my best friends. I invited it to my birthday and it did not show up, which is not surprising. Anyway, I find the frame where I want the transformation to take place, and I add a bazillion points to my outfit to match it to the shape of the bear. My knees turning into like the little stubby legs of the bear, my arms and body turning into the head, and oh, wait a minute. At first I was embarrassed that my shirt lifted up to see my belly, but now... I'm starting to realize that looks like the bear's arm. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Where was I? Going back about 10 to 12 frames, I reset the puppet tool so everything realigns with the original shot. I'm going to fade in the bear over a few frames, which should align perfectly with the puppet tool version of myself. But you'll notice I'm gonna have to add those details back to the bear. So for the arm on the right, I'm gonna roto that out and animate it so it starts behind the bear and then comes out over a few frames until it lands in the basket. And now to go back to those intrusive thoughts earlier, I'm gonna roto out that left arm and going backwards in the timeline, shrink it down until it's completely gone. For the colorful circles on the bottom of the bear's feet, I'm gonna duplicate the layer of the bear, freeze it, and roto out the right foot. Now I'll do another version for the left foot. Moving back about 10 frames, I'm going to track these layers to stick to both of my knees, as well as use puppet warp to make sure it bends properly with my legs, and I will shrink the mask as well so it starts from basically nothing until this frame here. Now for the goofiest part of the edit. I'm gonna take the last five frames where you see my head and roto it out. And using the puppet warp tool, I'm gonna expand that thing until it fills the entire snout. I'm also gonna use the paint tool to paint out the hair and the beard frame by frame to match the general shape of that snout to then transform into the eyeballs of the bear. And with a few more small tweaks, I'm gonna show my friends the results. I have no idea what you've even been working on. Just click play? Yeah. Okay. One, two, and... <laughs> I like the way that your face turns into the nose. And then your arms go back for the ears. <laughs> Where'd you get the clothes? They're color graded, so... Oh, so you use two different takes of Yeah, there. so it's technically three different like versions. I couldn't even tell. That's really cool. That's... Mm. Nice. All right. One edit down, two to go. Now at this point, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all the After Effects jargon, don't fret. Skillshare is here, and they're here to help. And they're today's sponsor. In fact, Skillshare has amazing classes in After Effects specifically for beginners. But these classes are just the tip of the iceberg. Skillshare is great for learning particular skill sets you're already interested in learning, as well as discovering new interests and ways to accomplish it. They have learning paths as well, which are hand-picked classes put together for your own creative journeys. And yes, 
they have one for After Effects, which I would highly recommend. That being said, if you have creative interest outside of After Effects, don't worry, Skillshare has that too. They have so many categories, including music, graphic design, and animation and 3D. And under that 3D category, they have so many topics. In fact, I just finished a class in 3D Claw Simulation in Blender, and it was fantastic. And now I'm gonna be doing a class in 3D Set Extension, also for Blender. One of my favorite aspects of Skillshare is that the classes are taught by industry professionals. So you can trust that the skills and techniques that you're learning are actually applicable to your field of interest. You can even share your own project after the class to get feedback from the community. No matter what your creative interests are, Skillshare has a way of taking you to the next level. Also, I am excited to share that, share that Skillshare. Skillshare has given me a special link where the first 500 people to join will get a month for free. Yes, free. So what are you waiting for? Get started today. Back to the video. The teddy bear is done, but now it's time for some more fun. Next up, we have the plunger. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna turn into this shape. I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna have to change the color a little bit to match this. It's clean, I promise. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm not exactly sure why, but I decided break dancing was the easiest way to turn into a plunger. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I don't have a red hat. Let me see if I have Oh, maybe I should put on tan socks so I can shh. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Three, two, one, action. Oh, Next the plunger. I'm gonna try this in different locations so one of them will work. It has to work. And now it's time for the garbage can. To turn into this garbage can, I'm going to be using this spare piece of carpet because it's kind of a similar height and color to this garbage can. It's a little bit off, but we can make it work. Has to. Here we go. Yep. So I ran through the scene of opening the dumpster so you think I'm throwing the garbage in the dumpster only to throw it up in the sky to then pull out the carpet, spinning into the trash can, blowing everybody's minds, including my own. Oh, you good? Yeah, that one busted. Let's grab a new bag and throw it in there real quick. Now. And getting the trash to actually land in the can was more complicated than I thought as well. Switch, go. Oh, oh. That's oh. kind of funny. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> but we finally got it. Wait, nope. No, no, we got it. It's good. We filmed all three scenes and we got it done in one day. Time for the edit. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a clean plate and freeze it, and this will be to remove those shifting shadows in the foreground. Now I'm gonna use Roto Paint to cut myself out for the entire video until the end of my breakdancing segment, if you can even call it breakdancing. That's pretty good. And with that frozen, I'm gonna add a mask as well to follow the shadows under my feet. And I'm gonna add two more masks that are gonna move with my feet as they come really close to the camera during the breakdancing segment. Okay, I've procrastinated long enough. It's time to actually turn myself into the plunger. In order to do this, I'm going to break myself into multiple layers. Over the course of about 15 frames, I'm going to separate my hat, my head, my upper body, my right leg, and my foot. It's now time to use some transformation keyframes for position, scale, and rotation, as well as the puppet warp tool to get this thing to look like a generic plunger. I then go to the frame where I want this transformation to begin, and I hit reset on the puppet warp tool to get everything back to normal. Now I pre-compose all those layers into one, and I turn the actual plunger on at half opacity. I then animate this human Frankenstein plunger thing to line up exactly where the real plunger is, and I work backwards. With that done, here's how we're looking. Now I'm gonna make two solids, one for my shadow and one for my reflection. I'm going to animate both to follow me throughout the transition until I'm a plunger. Finally, I'm noticing a lot of dust and grime on the bottom of the countertops. I'm painting it all out to make it look clean. Much better. Finally, I'm gonna apply some grain and some final color corrections, and the plunger video is done. All right, two edits down, one to go. This final one is the trash can transition. And it would not be a Caleb Natale VFX video if there wasn't a problem right off the bat. So you'll notice as I throw the trash bag in the air, it actually lands directly in front of me, which on one hand is awesome, but on the other hand, it means that there's a few frames that I'm gonna have to paint myself back in, and unfortunately, I am moving during those frames. So I'm going to freeze frame and cut out my body on both sides of the timeline of when that obstruction happens. And using the transform controls and the puppet warp tool, I'm gonna do my best to match those two in the middle. I'm also gonna roto my head out individually so I can animate that separate from the rest of my body to make it feel a little bit more alive. With that morph complete, it's time to line up the shot of the trash can and the shot of me spinning. Out of all the takes, this one definitely felt the best. So I'm now gonna roto out the trash can from this moment all the way to the end of the video using roto paint. And I'm gonna roto out my arm on the right plus the carpet, but leave out any part of my body to the right of that. Using the transform controls, I'm gonna animate the trash can up where the carpet starts 
all the way down to the trash can's original resting spot. And using the puppet warp tool, I'm gonna match it to the shape of the carpet much better. And finally, using the eraser, frame by frame, I'm going to paint out parts of the trash can that I do not need. There we go. Now with my body completely covered, I'm going to animate my legs up and behind the trash can, as well as making sure I remove any part of my body to the right side of the trash can. And using another instance of puppet warp tool, I'm going to have my hand and the carpet follow along the rim of the trash can and eventually go behind the trash can right here. I'm going to make a mask for the shadow of the trash can that avoids me and Austin's shadows as well. Now that I have something I'm happy with, I'm gonna add my final color grade and I'm gonna show the guys. What even is this video? Wow, <laughs> let's do it. Oh, shit. I... Ooh, slide in. Just break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Oh, there's two? Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. The trash can one's really good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, which one was your favorite? You can't beat the break dancing one. <laughs> Plunger is my favorite one right now. Trash can. If you wanted a more in-depth version of what I taught in this video, I actually have a Patreon where I share just that. Hopefully this inspires you to make your own morphing videos. And if it did, I'd love to see you morph into a boom. If you make a video where you morph into a controller, tag me, because I'd love to see it. Finally, if you want to see more videos just like this one, please like and subscribe as it lets me know, hey, I want to see more videos like this one. Okay, thank you, bye. No, I don't know if you can click here. There might, there might, there might be a picture of a clown right here for all I know. Whew.